Hi, my name is Jerry Monkman, and this is another tip from the In the Field section of my book, The AMC Guide to Outdoor Digital Photography. And today's tip is use your histogram. And the histogram is a tool you use to get proper exposure. Getting proper exposure is one of those important things you need to do as a photographer. You want to make sure you don't have overexposed photos, blown out highlights, and you don't want underexposed photos where you have you muddy up the tones and you have a trouble seeing detail in your photos. Um, and the histogram is a great tool to help you get perfect exposures when you're in the field. You know, in the old days we had to use light meters and, and a lot of fancy tools to measure exposure because we were shooting film and we couldn't see our results. Um, these days you don't have to necessarily learn all those skills to get perfect exposures. All you need to do is learn how to read a histogram. And a histogram is basically a bar graph and it, and it maps out the tonality of your photo by showing you from from black on the left to white on the right, the number of pixels at each tonal gradation between black and white. And by learning how to read this, you can adjust your exposure in the field and always get a, a correct exposure for the scene you're shooting. So there's no one perfect histogram that you should be striving for. Every photo has its own sort of correct histogram based on the light on the scene and the composition and everything like that. But there are certain things to look out for, one of which is spikes on either end of the graph. If you have a spike over on the right, the white side of the graph, that means you're clipping your highlights, you're blowing out your highlights, they're overexposed, there's no detail there. If you have a spike over on the black side of the graph, the left hand side of the graph, you've clipped your shadows, that means you have pure black shadow with no detail at all. Sometimes that's okay, but if you, you know, decide you need to see that detail, that means you need to change your exposure. So how I usually do it is I'll, I'll take a, a shot at the camera, what the camera thinks is a good meter reading, and if I've got that spike over on the right, I've got blown out highlights, that means I need to reduce exposure. And let's say I'm shooting at f16 and 1 100th of a second. To get a darker photo, to bring that graph over, to bring in detail for my highlights, Instead of shooting at 1 100th of a second, I'll set the shutter speed for 1 250th of a second, say. Um, or I can change my f-stop from f16 to f22, which lets in less light and is a darker exposure. And then I'll check my histogram again and see if I've got the proper exposure. On the other hand, if I've got a histogram where everything's over on the left and I've got a bunch of dark shadows, then I need to increase exposure. So with that same sort of scenario, f16, 1 100th, I would change my shutter speed to say 1 50th of a second to let in more light to help brighten up the scene and then check the histogram again and make sure that I'm, I'm getting a proper exposure. Sometimes you need to add another stop of light, maybe go down to 1 25th of a second, something like that. So like I said, every photo needs a different sort of histogram for it to be right. Sometimes, you know, you can't get everything right in one photo and you might need to recompose to get rid of your blown out highlights or your blocked up shadows. But by learning to read a histogram, you can start to identify these problems as you're encountering them in the field and make adjustments on the fly without having to wait till you get home and, and see that you missed the shot. And that's the great thing about using a histogram. Okay, so that's a, just a brief introduction to today's tip, which is use your histogram. But get out there, try it, practice using it, learn how that graph maps out to the photos, and you'll start to understand um, the kind of adjustments you need to make based on your histogram to get proper exposures and better photographs. To see more tips like this, and for more information about my book, The AMC Guide to Outdoor Digital Photography, visit monkmanphoto.com.